Very so, old. so your Pepsi short film. Tell, tell me what was the inspiration and how did you do that? How did you make such a, an attractive looking film for for no money? Uh, well, first of all, we got my favourite cinematographer to shoot it, uh, who's my fiance. <laughs> um, so yeah, big shout out that way. Um, but yeah, we we got an email through from Raindance, uh, basically saying there's this competition, but the deadline's in two weeks, um, and we didn't really know what to make of it, and we pinged a couple of emails back and forth with Raindance and decided to go for it. Um, the prize, I don't know uh, how much you've said about the competition already, but the prize, if we win, it becomes the official trailer for Rain Dance, and uh, they fund our next picture. Um, so they're, they're going to be executive producing it, which right. will be a very cool, very cool right. deal. So um, technically, how did you did you make it? I mean, I don't mean on a production basis. I'm talking about literally the actual camera technology, camera technology. and the, okay. the post-production. Uh, it was very low-end, uh, well, low-end kit, but a small amount of kit. We had a Canon 7D. Uh, we have three lenses, we have a, a beautiful 15mm fisheye, um, and it's, it's not rectilinear, so it's, it's deliberately distorted, and it's a wonderful quirky lens on the 7D. Uh, we've got a workhorse 2470, um, and we've got a 50mm 1.4 as well, which is a lovely portrait. And when you lens. say 50mm 1.4, are these, these are not just the, the, the kind of cheapy Canon lenses, are they good lenses, or are they Zeiss lenses? The, what the are 2470, they? They're, they're all Canon lenses, um, so it's a 15mm Canon fisheye, which will set you back about 300 quid, but there's a massive waiting list on them because they're quite rare. Um, the 2470 is a workhorse, it's about a £1,200 lens, again made by Canon, but it's L series, so it's, it's a waterproof, well, more or less waterproof, weatherproof lens. Mm. Uh, the 50mm is much cheaper, the 50mm is, I think, about 280 quid. Yeah, I bought that same lens myself. Yeah, it's a nice lens, it's mm. a nice lens if you treat it right. Mm. You've got to be gentle with that one, but it's, uh, it's nice and fast. So. Mm. And fun. let's talk about post production, because I know one of your core skills is the ability to ma uh, marshal the. the, the um, the power of After Effects. Yeah, okay, so there's quite a heavy grading angle. Um, I think the real lesson we learned on this one was the power of really taking your time over the lighting. Um, and there's a, it's just trying to create depth. But in terms of After Effects, we were grading with Magic Bullet Looks, which is fantastic. Um, also using After Effects CS5, so we've got Selective Color in there. Now, there wasn't a lot said about Selective Color. It's a fantastically powerful tool built into After Effects from version CS5, uh, and it's come over from Photoshop. It was great in Photoshop, to the point that we actually did a lot of grading in Photoshop because of that tool, and now it is in After Effects. So it's right. a great little tool there to get right. some extra and control. You, you cut in Premiere as well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, again, that's the, the fiancé, Eve Hazelton, uh, DOP and editor. She cut in Premiere Pro. Um, and then workflow straight in. And the thing that, that um, we try not to get caught up in is this kind of whole render, re-render, proxy workflow. Um, if you've got a PC that's fast enough and you're running CS5, it is the MP4 file straight out the camera, straight off the, the compact flash card that are going into Premiere, dynamically going into After Effects, and they don't get rendered until your final render, which right. saves you a lot of time, a lot of disk space, and it works a beaut. Right, right. Um, so... <clears throat> Is there anything else we need to talk about with with this short that you know you, you mentioned the lighting? There's the, yeah, there's you, the, the you have a lot of lighting, I assume. Yeah, there's a lot of lighting, but it's 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 not necessarily expensive lighting. You know, like we lit the whole thing. We had three redheads, and the rest of them are these like ten pound work lights that right. builders use that we so, haven't got. So I need to be clear. No, no, you didn't have a lot of lighting. You no, had, exactly. You had three redheads. There's a lot of wattage there, but because right. the, these these work lights are builders things, they're like 500 watts each. They come in a pair of two for like 10 quid in Aldi, and we just bought a huge bank of them a couple of years back. So we cracked them out of the garage. A few redheads. We had all the lamps from the house going. Um, we did a lot of lighting with screens from laptops. We did a lot of lighting with the LED light on the iPhone 4. It's a fantastic little hard light if you need it in places. Um, so yeah, it was really just kind of... It, we spent a little bit of time on as extras on War Horse, the Spielberg movie, and just watched everything Kaminsky did. And it's all about building the depth, it's, which is why Shallow Depth of Field is so popular, because it's, you know, it's, it's an obvious display of depth. Moving camera, parallax, adds depth. Adding smoke and volumetric effects to the background and rain adds depth. Backlighting things adds depth. It's all about taking this 3D environment and trying to put it onto a 2D image and have it still look 3D. So people aren't sat there going, oh, this is an interesting picture. Mm. It's an, an experience that they can be drawn into. So mm. it's, it's really about, I think that's what, when people say, oh, it's a really nice looking short, which people have been very kind, um, they're talking about the depth, I think, a lot of the time, and composition, right. and colour. Right. So the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, but yeah, I think that was a lot of it. it was a big so step. 